Hello and welcome to Rathod Science Academy. Today in this session we are going to see current affairs of 3rd October 2024. So let's get started with our discussion and let us see the important articles from our examination point of view from each and every angle and I will be also telling you like how you can expect questions from that topic and after once class is done I will be sharing you one link of daily quiz on this current affairs topic. Okay, so I will be giving you like five questions every day and that questions will be asked per your UPSC standards. So try to attempt that test for sure so that you can understand like how the questions will be asked in your UPSC and how UPSC will be trapping you so that you will be not entering into that trap on the final day of your exam. Okay, so please do follow current affairs quiz for sure. So see this first image. So this image I found in international edition of uh, the, uh, Hindu. So here this image which showcasing about one folk festival of state of Telangana. So what is the name of this festival? That is Badkama. Okay, so here how can you get a question? In our GS paper one under art and culture, we have a topic called as festivals. So in this festivals, we have two types of festivals. So one will be your national festival. That means these festivals will be celebrated on national wide. And next one is folk festivals. That means state specific festivals are called as folk festival. And this Batkama, it belongs to a folk festival category in state of Telangana. So there is a very high chance of getting question from your folk festivals. So here how you have to make the notes for this topic is you have to see the name of festival name and another column you have to see state to which it belongs to and you have to see what are the special features. And next one is whether these festivals how we are promoting our culture in other countries like which countries are celebrating these festivals for example this Batkama festival will be also celebrated in US where Indian community who are present in so and so regions so like that these folk festivals which are celebrated in our country and how we are enriching our cultural diversity and how we are preserving our heritage. So here there may be a question called as how Indian diaspora is preserving our culture and heritage of India. So that you can use this festivals which are celebrating in other parts of the other countries in the world so that you can give these examples okay in your answer so that that will enrich your quality of your answer okay so in this way you have to make the notes let us see some facts regarding this festival so actually it is a nine day long annual festival so every year we are celebrating this festival for nine days actually it is also called as festival of flowers so it begins it began on a colorful note across the Telangana state. Across the Telangana state, this festival will be celebrated. And it is a colorful floral festival. That means we are using only flowers here. So that to exotic locally available flowers. And this festival which coincides with the monsoon. So what happens in the monsoon will be getting rainfall. And what are the lakes, what are the streams, what are the rivers? They are filled with new water, right? So here in this festival, we are making the pile of flowers like Gunga and Tangedu, Banti, Nandivardhana. So these are abundable, abundantly locally available flowers. And actually, so in this festival, we will be making one, uh, one Bodhema. Bodhema is nothing but, so we'll be making the deity of Gauri. So it can be made by, by using turmeric. Turmeric, it is very special that it is having antibiotic properties. So actually after once this Batkama is done, so we are taking that and we are leaving in the nearby water body. So in that flowers we will be having this deity of Gauri which is made up of either in some areas they will be preparing with mud, in some areas they will be preparing with water, uh, with this 
turmeric so whenever this turmeric it is mixing with water so as you all know that in this monsoon season we will be getting uh, the flooded water which is having lots of impurities so whenever we are we are making this turmeric to be added to that water it will be having antibiotic property so that even if you are consuming that we will be having less impact of getting disease from that contaminated water so this is the idea why we are celebrating this festival okay so actually it also when in some times in some areas they will be making with earthly mud so that it will be helpful for reinforcing of ponds and even it will be helpful for retaining of more water okay so that this festival will be improving the bond between humans between earth and water so that we can also conserve our natural resources so i think in your environment and ecology you studied about the sacred groves right so in the same way whatever the folk festivals we are celebrating it is connecting humans with nature humans with environment humans with natural resources okay so this is the importance of folk festivals so if you are getting a question like the relevance of folk festivals in conserving the nature in maintaining the proper natural resources in maintaining the sustainable living can you add this kind of at least three to four examples of folk festivals and can you link how these festivals will helpful for conserving of nature right so in this way also you can use this kind of example to substantiate your answer in your mains okay and even there is also a high chance of getting prelims based question from this area and see this next topic tamil nadu planning panel drawing up heat mitigation measures what is the keyword keyword is heat mitigation so from which subject you will be dealing with this topic from gs paper 3 under environment and ecology and even from gs paper 2 under governance okay so what are the dimensions that you have to see so from environment and ecology you have to see what are the causes for increasing of heat so can we connect this topic with global warming yes okay so here you have to know about what are the causes for global warming so tell me what are the causes for this global warming why there is increasing of atmospheric temperature is happening now because of increasing of carbon dioxide emissions and because of pollution uh, next because of urban heat islands right and because of uh, uh, that comes into camp, uh, this industry okay industrial revolution next because of greenhouse effect okay so here what are the measures we can take to control this heat waves so actually in your gs paper 4 in your ethics so there was one case to regarding increasing of heat so because of increasing of heat even ground water depletion is happening and actually there is a tussle between agriculture related farmers and as well as industrial owners so they are drawing water and they are drawing water but government is imposing more restrictions on farmer than compared to that of industries so as a district collector what are the steps that you are going to take again there is a high chance of getting a case study regarding heat mitigation clear so in this way you have to focus on each and every article so tell me from here we have some international organizations and as well as conventions or agreements regarding controlling of global warming what are there we have paris climate deal yes so what does this paris climate deal says we have to reduce global temperature by 1.5 degree centigrade to 2 degree centigrade when we compare to pre industrial level that is 1990s temperature so if you achieve that then we can control this climate change and next one here is we have indcs that is nationally determined contributions so we have to achieve that 
and even india has a target of carbon neutrality or net neutrality by 2070 so these are the things that you have to add when you are writing about this global warming or climate change and from governance point of view you have to see the different levels okay let me write the levels here so levels here is international level and next one is at national level at star at state level at district level and at local level local level includes panchayats and municipalities so how government at all these levels can take measures to control this climate change so this is the thing that you have to take in care of so where you will be coming under you will be coming under at this district level at the district you are the head so if you are getting into the services obviously you will become the district magistrate or district collector so at district level what are the plans that you are going to take to control the measures so you have to know that and from ethics point of view you will be getting questions from your level but if you want to write mains answer of your gs1 sorry gs2 or gs3 you have to address all these levels okay so in this way you have to write your answer and you have to collect the points like what are the measures can be taken at international level so can you tell me what are the steps that you are taking at international level you are having cop you are having cbd and we are having a number of things regarding recently also we had this uh, united nations summit for future it also talks about climate change and even our environment uh, ministry secretary also talked that it is just not about carbon dioxide emissions we have to focus on sustainable livability so like that you can give some two to three examples from international level and tell me what are the things that you are taking from national level so we have caqm commission for air quality management in delhi so which is controlling air pollution in delhi and carbon dioxide emissions right apart from that at national level we have air quality index which will be measuring the quality of air at the different areas and even we have this scrapage policy because uh, old vehicles they will release more carbon dioxide emissions than composite of new vehicles and even pm e drive of our country so we are promoting electric vehicles and pm fame program and even we have uh, pm solar schemes so recently we studied about pm uh, solar muft bijli yojana right so can you add all those at this national level like if i go on saying i will be saying more than 10 right and next one it at state level so take your own state so what karnataka is doing so what ap is doing what telangana is doing what tamil nadu is doing and you are you have to come up with the clear details at this district level so at district level what steps that you have to take after coming into services you need to have a broad plan before even enter into the services so if you are having plans obviously your plans will be reflecting in your answer is yes or no then obviously you will be having lot of scope of clearing this examination compared to others you will be having a great vision for the future and next one here is at local level what this panchayats and municipalities can be done so at least each level three to four points with valuable examples and data then your work is done guys okay so actually this article is talking about what it is talking about tamil nadu state it is making some panel so that it wants to control heat mitigation or it wants to control heat in this state so here you got one details regarding this tamil nadu state apart from this you have to collect at least your own state data so that you can remember for the long time okay so see here this article is saying that tamil nadu faces significant heat challenges with temperatures often exceeding 35 degree centigrade Okay, thirty-five degree centigrade means high temperature or low temperature. So, what will be the temperature during summer in Rajasthan? What will be the temperature? It will be more than more than fifty degree centigrade, right? So now, 
even in this monsoon season normally in monsoon season and winter season obviously temperature will be less right compared to the top scorching summer so even now the temperature is 35 degrees centigrade in this uh, tamil nadu so what is the temperature that we can decide whether that is a heat wave or not according to imd according to imd it declares what is heat wave based on what temperature huh? no and it is different for hilly areas plains and coastal areas tell me now it should be more than 40 at plains it should be more than 38 hilly areas and more than 35 to 37 at coast areas right so now there is 35 degrees centigrade of temperature in this Tamil Nadu so because of this now state planning commission reports that yes we need to take some urgent steps to mitigate this heat and to mitigate the rising temperature so that we can reduce the impact on the public health and as well as state economy so how this temperature rise will be affecting state economy is there any relation how this temperature rise will be affecting state economy is there any relation online students yeah how what is that relation okay no one is ready to work that means there will be decreasing of work productivity if there is increasing of temperature right and what is the impact on health what happens if heat increases yeah, dehydration uh, next so what happens if the body is getting rehydrated do you know what happens really okay headache you will get headache why headache why you will be getting headache if you are dehydrated so our body contains mixture of fluids right so fluids in what form we will be having blood which is a fluid and even other than blood we have lymph okay so actually during dehydration what happens the water content in your blood will be get reduced so whenever water content in your blood will be reduced can it flow freely no so the what the blood flowing will be decreased so that your heart will now pumps very fastly because if the water is freely flowing or if the liquid is freely flowing then there is no need of applying much pressure to supply to all the body body parts so what happens whenever the water content in your blood is decreasing blood will become very thin now there will be increasing the increasing of load on your heart to pump to different parts so even though heart is taking extra effort to pump the blood sometimes there will be resistance in the moving of the blood so blood will be not moving to your brain so whenever your your, your body is not getting enough blood then what happens do you get enough oxygen which is required for the functioning of each and every cell no so blood is having hemoglobin so if hemoglobin is carrying the oxygenated blood then only your body will be getting the required oxygen which is uh, which is for your functioning of cells if, if they are not getting what happens so they are not getting proper oxygen and then the cells functioning will be reduced and obviously you will be getting fatigue you will be not feeling well and everything will start from that end okay so because of this obviously it will be having public health so if you if you have that condition of dehydration as soon as you go to hospital what they'll do first time first they will be they will be giving you an ors or else they'll be directly uh, keep this butterfly cannula to your hand and they will be giving salines because they want to increase the water content in your blood obviously right so that is a treatment that is the first hand treatment will be given by doctor okay so actually if you see the some important points in this article it says that india is projected that because of increasing of heat there is loss of economy but how much the data says that five percentage of gdp loss which happens whenever there is increasing of heat so here we need to take urgent measures to effectively mitigate the heat so that we can enhance economic productivity because the directly the climate conditions are responsible for our economy so if you are having good climate conditions obviously we can boost the economy for example if there is unseasonal rains it will be having effect on your agriculture right so if you are having droughts again there will be impact there will be decreased water availability there will be decreasing of the productivity there will be no work for do no work to do for the people right so everything is interconnected and this one here is there will be having high public health risk 
so because of high temperature heat related illness you will be getting so that we need to protect vulnerable populations so who will be getting affected if there is more amount of heat who will be dying more in summer season elderly people old age people why because more dehydration and already because of the age their cells will become very weak so they will be not capable with the changing environment okay so here especially vulnerable people needs more protection especially in urban areas why urban areas because if you compare with the rural areas with urban areas urban areas is having much more heat because of urban heat island and as well here is there will be impact on ecosystem so rising of heat which also having will be having positive impacts or negative impacts on biodiversity negative impacts so how so have you visited any national park uh, or any protected area in this summer season no ah yes because of increasing of heat it also increases forest fires and even there will be increased need of water so actually if you go to any national park uh, during the summer season so there will be increased water supply so they will be cooling the environment by sprinklers or by covering this animals with uh, water soaked gunny bags like that because heat will be having impacts on the biodiversity as well and even it will be having impact on agriculture so there will be obviously decreasing of agriculture productivity and that will leads to impact on food security and even there will be impact on local ecosystems and this one here is if you see the policy framework so state government need to take the proper policies so that we can address this problem of increasing of heat or else what happen there will be increasing of negative impact on the state gdp as well and for this we need proper community engagement for sure so community and stakeholders are very very important now so if you want to make this uh, strategies to be success so we need especially support so that we can come up with this heat resilient strategies and this one is we have to focus on innovation cooling solutions like how can we cool the environment so if you are in urban areas and if you are rich enough you can get ac coolers etc but what if you are living in some uh, remote areas so we have to focus on even making this cooling system affordable and accessible for everyone so it is can we add that into the part of inclusive growth yes okay and next one is intersectoral collaboration is also very very important because here because of climate change or heat agriculture is get impacted economy is getting impacted health is getting impacted so all these sectors they need to be collaborated so that we can come up with the effective planning methods clear okay see this article include persons with disabilities in ab pm jay scheme so what is this article is about aishman bharat pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana so even yesterday also we discussed this article so what is the recent update in this scheme 70 plus years are going to get free life insurance under this scheme so actually one more thing which had been proposed here is why only old people so can't we include this specially disabled people or persons with disability under this scheme because those people also neglected as par with this old age people so can why can't we include this so is it a valid point or not yes okay so from which subject we can say this from gs paper 2 under governance point of view and from gs paper 2 and 1 society and social issues point of view so whenever we are talking about vulnerable people can we add this people like persons with disabilities yes because they don't have proper access to education they don't have proper access to healthcare they don't have proper access to employment opportunities even if you are going in the public transport like buses so there will be two seats which is reserved one for senior citizen and one for people with disabilities or this a reservation for seats in this buses which are utilized efficiently so even if you are seeing any person who entered into that bus who is disabled so are you offering the seats for this people no right so because of this yes these are the people they need to be required with special attention special attention should be shown by 
the government so that we can make this people to be participated in our economy. So if you have a name of inclusive governance, inclusive development, inclusive economy, whatever may, it may be. So if you're not including these people, can we achieve that goal of inclusive growth? No, right? So these people also becomes the part of society and these people, they also having this, they're also part of OTA, right? So why these people need to be neglected? So this is a question which mainly raised now. So now let us see this article in detail. So here now, the National Disability Network urged Indian government to include persons with disabilities under this Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. So here again, one more condition which mainly keeps here is, so do these 70 plus years, all people who are present in our country, they will be getting the benefits? No. Only who comes under the socio-economic act since of 2011, they are eligible under this scheme. But now here National Disability Network is saying that without any limit on income or any age criteria, so every people who are having this disability need to be included. So is this possible now? Tell me. So can we include is everyone who are having this disabilities under this scheme? So what are the positives and what are the negatives? Think and tell me. What are the positives if you are including them without any limit on income and as well as age? What will be the advantages? Online guys, what will be the advantages? Come on. And what will be the disadvantages? And today question, today's question I will be giving on this topic, mains question, okay? And currently, inadequate insurance coverage and high healthcare costs are pushing individuals with disabilities into debt. So actually, these disabilities, they need some, uh, some technology that, we, that will be assisting them, right, if they are having any deaf. So we need hearing aids, right? So like that, we need some instruments that need to aid and assist their day-to-day -day life activities. So actually, these people, they are having high healthcare cost compared to that of normal people. So because of this, they are getting into debt. So now here, this commission is saying that, yes, we have to include this persons with disabilities under this scheme. Okay, now let us see the key points that you have to remember. The first one is ensuring the coverage of persons with disabilities under this scheme, which will provide safety net for this people so that they can come out of the financial stream and obviously they are getting some better healthcare opportunities. And next one here is there will be high healthcare expenses because for the normal people and to treat these people there will be high charges. So because of this, if government is including these people, obviously that will be increasing on the burden of government exchequer. So that is the thing. And next one here is actually many of them, they don't know, like uh, they don't have the knowledge regarding targeted outreach and to empower this disability. So what are the schemes came up by the government for this people with disabilities? We are not getting proper outcome because of even proper, not available of resources. So if you're including them, that will be some advantage for this people. And even we can focus on providing insurance. So if you see, have you ever heard that PWD, uh, PWG's people, that is people with disabilities, are having a health insurance? So will private insurance companies, they will be giving health insurance for these people? So what is the need? So we need to come up with even reforms in our insurance policies so that these people can be also included so that there will be decreasing of burden on government exchequer. And next one here is we have to bridge this equity gap. And we need to make inclusive policies so that we can ensure each and every person they will be having proper care regardless of their background. And this one is if you're including them, there will be a long term societal benefits and we can increase the productivity. If they are getting proper healthcare access, which is affordable and accessible, obviously these people will be also getting health, education, employment, they will be also contributing a lot. There are many people who are people with disabilities, they are working and they are contributing to economy. So do you know this person Steve Jobs? So what is the future? So what happened to him?
Next, do you see the movies? The people with disabilities, they achieve high. So there are some many motivational movies regarding how a disabled person who earns some clothes like that. So they also have the potential. They also are capable with as far as normal people, but they need some special attention. If they are getting that special attention, they can be also contributes to the society. Okay. And if you are getting any essay regarding this person's disabilities, try to know about Paralympics. So do you know about this Paralympics? So what is Olympics and what is Paralympics? Yes, disabled persons will be also participating in this Olympics. It is called as Paralympics. And this year, India excelled in this Paralympics. So you have to know about some success stories of these people, not only in Olympics, not only in the sports field, but also in other fields. So try to make a list of uh, five to ten people so that it will be also inspiring you. Like those people did that, but everything we are having, why can't we do that? So that try to make a note of this so that in your essays, in your main answers also you can write. Okay. So see this article. Modi says toilet coverage reached 100% after launch of Swachh Bharat mission. So what is the keyword? Swachh Bharat Mission. So if you're getting any scheme in news, what are the dimensions that you have to see? What is, that, what is that scheme is about? What are the features of that scheme? So who are eligible? So under which ministry it comes under? You have to see about funding and you have to see what are the advantages, disadvantages, challenges. So we got one scheme in this year means. What is that scheme? Udan scheme. That is about civil aviation. So every year you will be getting two, two, three questions in your prelims from the schemes and two questions for sure in your mains. Okay, mains you have to see the analysis points and from your uh, prelims you have to see the facts based. Okay, and here our Prime Minister is directly saying that after launching of this scheme only we achieved this 100%. So can we add this article as the significance or how far the scheme had achieved its objectives. So if you are getting any question regarding Swachh Bharat Mission came up with an objective of open free defecation in India. How far this objective had been achieved. So if you are getting this kind of question, can you use this article now? Yes. So in this way you have to use your articles in the news in your preparation. So this is the way to write answers. Okay. So let us see this article. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced that toilet coverage in India has reached 100% since the launch of Swachh Bharat Mission a decade ago. That means 10 years back we launched this scheme and within this 10 years it had been a huge success in India. I don't know what is happening on practically but I want to talk about what is there in the news. Okay, So there are around 12 crore toilets they were constructed. So on another side, you have to see the practical thing, what has happened. Because here in your questions, you have to write, even if you're getting analyzed, you have to write even the negatives. So for writing negatives, you have to do something research. OK, so now let us see here. So our prime minister highlighted that, yes, it is having a social impact on, a, on this initiative and which approved the dignity and health of marginalized communities and even it, it emphasized the importance of sanitation workers. So actually, so because of this scheme, to some extent, I will be also agreeing that, yes, there is decreasing of open defecation free in some areas. So whenever we are making this open defecation free, yes, there are obviously healthcare benefits. Like if no one is defecating outside, so we will be not having any fecal matter here and there so that we can maintain sanitation and there will be decreasing of contamination of lakes, rivers, etc. Because especially in rural areas, so where the people will go for defecation near lakes, ponds, etc. If suddenly rain comes, what happened? So this fecal matter will go and will join this water. So that what happened that water will be getting contaminated. If people who are drinking this water, then what happens? They will be getting this water contaminated diseases like cholera, diarrhea, etc. So you know, that cholera and diarrhea is the deadly disease which led to the lots of deaths of children every year. So
so because of this uh, this scheme the government came up with improving of toilet constructions in the houses and government gave the money for the people to construct toilets so that what happened the defecation had been decreased but even though in some areas so for the name sake they build the toilets but they are not using them so it is another case because of lack of water availability and because some people especially some communities they feel that whenever they are having these bathrooms and whenever they are going for defecating in their home it is impure so it is based on purity and impurity concepts again okay but even though so here this article is saying that about construction of toilets that is 100% coverage of toilets construction happen okay clear okay let us see some important points so what is the impact of this scheme so this swachh bharat abhiyan scheme has successfully transformed less than 20 40% of coverage before the starting of this scheme to now it is 100% of construction of this toilets in the in india so that what happened it have some impacts on the improvement of public health there is decreasing of diarrhea and cholera deaths in our country and even there is immediate sanitation we had and we promoted health of society as a whole and this one is we focused on social equity that is we are focusing on dignity of marginalized groups especially poor dalits tribals because they cannot afford much for the building of toilets in their home so for such people government is giving help to build them so that it will be helpful for improving of their living conditions and even there is intersection of human and human rights and as well as health so if you are not having uh, toilets in your home so it will be also having impact on the human rights right okay and even there is also increasing of health and as well as status and it also encourages greater community engagement in cleanliness efforts and actually when we start our ethics classes especially we have this chapter called as attitude so in that chapter of attitude i will be discussing about the swachh bharat abhiyan scheme implementation so there we'll be having lots and lots of discussions regarding how we have to bring a change among the people to use the toilets and this one here is you have to know about investment in sanitation so this toilet is around 10000 crore allocation and they what are the amount that they spent so they said that they are getting the outcomes in the in this public health infrastructure and even they are also expanding sanitation facilities now so it is not only like construction of toilets now so these toilets will be having the pipelines like drainage pipeline and they have to even remove that waste it is a it is now the responsibility of government right so here we have to focus on even improving of sanitation in the areas where they build this toilets and we are also thinking that there will be behavioral change so now the society here you can see this word attitude so attitude is a topic that you will be seeing in your ethics okay so here swachh bharat abhiyan or swachh bharat mission has not only improved the physical conditions but even it also changed the societal attitude towards sanitation practices so even now people they want to go for defecating in only bathrooms because of right to privacy and even do you know that most of the attacks on women they happens when they go out for defecation okay so because of this swachh bharat mission so that also led to decreasing of crimes against women in rural areas so this is also one success story that you have to know and next one here is public engagement so here people are also coming forward and they are also suggesting that they need essential uh, sustainable development and especially they want to maintain hygiene they want to maintain sanitation so because of this this made this uh, program successful so if you see some facts regarding this scheme it is a massive uh, mass movement which created by our country in year 2019 the father of our nation mahatma gandhi always focus on swachhata swachhata leads to healthy swachhata leads to prosper life so based on that we came up with this swachh bharat abhiyan and actually it was launched on october 2nd 2014 and this year it marks 10 years that is one decade of implementation of this scheme so because of this we are talking about the success of this scheme now
Okay, see this article. PM launches special welfare package for tribal villages. So in your GS paper 2, there was question regarding government support to marginalized communities like STs, SCs and OBCs. So there, can you write this new scheme again? Can you add this? Yes, you have to make a note of schemes came up by the government for tribal people. And if you are taking your anthropology as optional, so in your paper too, you will be studying about this tribal anthropology. And there will be studying in detail like what are the problems faced by the tribals and why those problems and how these problems of tribals from one area and another area are differing. And you have to see how the state governments and as well as government of India is taking steps to control these tribal areas. Okay, so from anthropology background also it is very, very important. So now this article is important from GS paper to under governance and even from anthropology background also it is important from tribal anthropology. Tribal anthropology. Okay, as you know that I'm going to start this anthropology option from November onwards. And if any online students or YouTube students, if you want to enroll this anthropology here, we will be providing both online and as well as offline. So every day you will be having classes from two to two and a half hours. And within three and a half months, I will be covering entire your anthropology portion. And my anthropology classes are entirely different from any other anthropology classes. So we will be focusing on, on the particular word and we'll be understanding the word meaning and we'll be taking the examples and my class will be like entirely interactive classes and I will be allow you to talk and there I'll be showcasing images, videos and you can fully enjoy my classes and the cost is also very affordable like just 35,000 rupees for your optional along with daily answer writing practice and I will be also giving you the notes for that in the form of dictation or sometimes I will be sharing the PDF, images, etc. So that you can make your own notes. Okay. So if you want to enroll that course, you can contact us on the number which is displaying on the screen. Okay. So now let us see this article. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched Dartri Aba Jantiya Gram Utkarsh Abhyan in which state in Jharkhand. And actually why this scheme? Because the tribal population in Jharkhand is high even if you're comparing with some states in the southern parts. So actually they are focusing on especially increasing of living standards of these tribals in tribal majority villages across 550 districts of Jharkhand. So this initiative it is around 79,000 crore budget and this scheme it is for five years and they are focusing on especially scheduled tribe majority villages. So you have to remember that only in the state of Jharkhand. It is not across the India. So here if you see the details, it says that it is a comprehensive welfare approach. So this Datri Aba Janjatiya Gram Utkarsh Abhiyan, so this program which is focusing on addressing what are the unique challenges faced by the tribal populations in India. So if you see tribals in Telangana or tribals in AP, and if you're comparing with the tribals of northeast or tribals of eastern country, eastern part of the country, so they, are their problems same? No. So lots and lots of different problems they are facing. And we will be discussing them clearly, okay? So here, to address the unique problems are faced by these people, so they are getting this scheme. And because of this scheme, so they are focusing on transformation of their life, especially in the remote regions of Jharkhand. And they are focusing on long-term investments in underdeveloped areas so that it will help you for tribal welfare. And even state government and central government, they are having a collaboration so that they are focusing on giving solutions to the local needs. And they are coming up with targeted interventions like they are focusing on healthcare, they are focusing on education, and they are focusing on welfare package. Okay, so because of this scheme, what will be the impact that is expected positive outcome? That is, they are going to uplift millions of lives and they want to improve overall quality of life and as well as they want to focus on economic productivity in the tribal regions. Okay, so that is the thing. And see here another article, inflection point. It is talking about West Asia needs intervention of major world powers for peace. 
so you know that iran start iran started attacking israel and even there are some issues which are going on in lebanon because of hezbollah and even the issue which is going on is still palestinian right so let us see this article and this article is important from your international relations from your gs paper too so here you have to know about who is hezbollah so actually in yesterday's class itself i said like you have to refer your past notes of current affairs to know about hezbollah so how many of you gone through the notes so who are this hezbollah uh iran what is iran hezbollah no idea very good okay so iran on october 1st it used ballistic missiles and iran started attacking israel so because of this there is increasing of conflict in west asia especially iran palestine israel and lebanon okay so here hezbollah it is nothing but iranian backed lebanese political party and even this hezbollah or a militant group so here accused of israel of carrying out attacks which israelis have neither owned nor disowned that is nothing but so there is allegation that the leaders of hezbollah they were killed by the attack done by israel so because of this iran want to take retaliation steps so because of this iran used ballistic missiles to attack israel so that is the thing which is happening so hezbollah is nothing but iran backed lebanese political party and even it is a militant group so here if you see this part is israel and you have to see this this yellow part and here yellow part it is palestine and this small part is called as gaza strip and here we have dead sea so have you studied dead sea anywhere in your geography why you read this dead sea in your geography what is speciality of this dead sea yes it is saline water and if you want to learn swimming you can go to here and you can swim there because of high salinity so you will be, you will be floating on that you will be not drowning into the water okay so it is present between here israel and as well as jordan so between these two countries we have that okay now let us see here what is happening now what will be the future course of war between this israel and iran so there are several scenarios possible for over the next few weeks like if iran is doing retaliation and again israel can do retaliation attacks so there will be further increasing of escalations so now there might be the air strikes on targeting in israel and as well as israel can target iran so iran could coordinate with its partners because it is having lots and lots of influence with is hamas hezbollah houthis etc so now iran can also take the help of its partners and it can do retaliation against israel and israel also can carry aerial offensive against not just hezbollah but even lebanese Leb lebanon because this hezbollah is the political party in lebanon so what are the concerns why we have to think about that and why i have to say this to you why you need to know about this because yes there is a threat to indian community in israel in in, in any very in iran in any gulf countries or west asian countries indian diaspora is located if this kind of attacks are happening so sometimes it may cause loss of life of indians in these countries right so because of this india is having concern regarding indian community india is not concerned about hezbollah or hamas or iran or nay nothing so we are only concerned about our indian diaspora and our remittances that we are getting from those and as one is yes west asia is very important for our energy security right we are importing crude oil from these countries and even we had recently agreements for natural gas from the western asian countries so again for energy security we have to bother and it's one is significant and strategic importance do you know in iran we had a project what is a project chabhar port right so we are investing a lot there if someone comes and if someone throw a missile on that chabhar port what happens what is the fate of indian investment again it will be economic loss for india so for that we are focusing on that and even we have imec corridor india middle east europe economic corridor so in that iran is also part so if something is happening iran obviously this fault will be getting late 
So whenever investment project will get late, then what happened? It will be having financial crisis on India, right? And actually, Chabhar port is gateway for Afghanistan and Central Asia. If it is affected, means obviously our connection with Afghanistan will be also get affected. And we have this I two U two initiative that is India, Israel, UAE, and US. So here Israel is part of I two U two. So if something is happening in Israel again, this I two U two initiative will be get affected. Okay, and even from Israel we got Barak missile, right? So Israel is also very important for our military or for our technology. So again, if something is happening in Israel, again it will be having impact on our defense relations with Israel. So because of all these reasons, India is India is having concern. Clear? Just for our own benefits. Clear? So these are the important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. So by this, I'm concluding. I hope you enjoyed this class. If you really like this class, hit the like button and please do share this class to your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Ratha or Thais Academy. And the link of current affairs quiz I will be posting in the Telegram channel. So if you're not part of that, so please do join this Telegram channel. The link is given in description box. Thank you, guys.